Even if Greece gets a bailout, how long before Spain, Portugal, even Italy might follow? And would an eventual default over there affect markets over here? We are back now with our panel, Adam. There are more and more people over in Italy and France and Portugal saying this. In fact, one Italian, very prominent Italian, said what's happening in Greece today will be happening to Italy tomorrow. Sooner or later, default is coming. Yeah, I think he's right, whoever said it, because, look, Spain with 25 percent unemployment, how do you dig your way out of this? Now, and the Spanish economy has been uh, performing better. But if you're the government of Spain telling your people that it's performing better when people are unemployed, I mean, this resonates here in the United States, yeah. doesn't do much good. So, Rich, if there is a default over there, how could it not affect our markets here, particularly the banks? Because they're just not that big. They're not that big enough to manage. Italy matter, is David. not that I mean, big. And Spain, number one I mean, and number maybe two, maybe Greece, but Italy and Spain are pretty big. They're not that big. And number two, th this information is already embedded into market prices. Okay, Jeff, what do you think? Uh, I do agree with the notion that the economy is not that big and it's embedded in market prices. But I think that what people might be missing here is that this is essentially a negotiation between a borrower and a, and a lender. And I think Italy is right. What happens with Greece is going to happen with it. But that's what's happening right now is very publicly in, amidst elections. These governments are negotiating. Are you going to get 10 cents on the dollar or 99 cents on the dollar? And that's kind of what's playing on in a very public way right now. I think behind closed doors, people are going to do what they have to do to mm -hmm. avoid default and, and systemic risk and all that. Since so I think it's a much bigger deal. Do what they People make it out to <laughs> That's a good point. The politicians I mean, are going fair, to cater to their constituencies, point, which point. leaving would actually be worse for them. Yep. But they're going to make the short-term decision yes. and cater to the 25 percent unemployment. They'll keep putting it like off Spain. and off and off and off. Well, last week the president's man at the FCC was making its case for regulating the internet. This week, Congress is answering with a measure to ban internet taxes forever. So who's going to win at all this, Jeff? Well, you know, I'm going to talk my own self-interest first here. I do. Investorplace.com is an internet company. I mean, we are a media company, too. But, Dave, you know, media is so about technology these days. So we don't need any more burdens on ourselves than we do now. I agree with some taxes, but this is a wrong tax. Because bigger, bigger picture, when you think about it, there's already so many costs that have been driven downstream to most consumers. Internet, there's a, there's a big connection between how much connectivity you have and what your net worth is. So I don't think we need to, to price more consumers out of the market by adding more taxes. If anything, we need to make the internet more accessible both to businesses and consumers, and I don't think this does that. And Rich, if the president was to get his way, if the FCC was to regulate the Internet uh, in, in the way that they want to regulate the Internet, they would be able to impose more taxes. They would be able to impose price controls. Uh, isn't it better to go the no-tax route? Oh, yes, I think so. Now, you know, if you're a little bookshop and you look at Amazon, you know, maybe you have a different point of view on this, and I have some sympathy for that. But the last thing the U.S. economy needs as a whole, and the last thing this most dynamic sector, the Internet, needs is a higher tax burden. My goodness, higher regulatory burdens. What is this administration thinking? Adam? Well, we're not talking about the sales tax. We're talking about the access to Internet, and it's a bad idea. We should keep the law that's in place. Well, you now. start one tax, right. tax and you have a whole but, but, bunch of new but ones. Here's, come how, up. here's how it's going to play out. You've got local governments that, you know, could, you know, throughout the, the 50 United States that see potential gold here by being able to initiate whatever taxes they want. You need to stop that. And at the end of the day, the Internet companies have a lot more money than the local governments to lobby and buy the vote. They'll buy the vote in Congress. The tax will not take place. The law will be met. Will be renewed and there won't be the ability. Rich Carl Gart, is Silicon Valley of, of two minds on this issue? No, Silicon Valley is pro-internet and uh, low-tech. You know, Silicon Valley can be as hypocritical as any other place in the country, but, uh, but I think they're on the side of angels on this one. Okay, by the way, Rich Carl Gard, you can see a Forbes on Fox every Saturday at 11 a.m. on Fox News Channel. 